good morning. Welcome into the house of the Lord one more time. Why, this is indeed the day that the Lord has made. We came to rejoice. We come to be glad about it. If you just glad about it, won't you put your hands together? Tell God, thank you again. Tell him, thank you for his grace and his mercy, his loving kindness. God, we ask that you would have your way in the building on today. God, move by your power. God, we're asking that you would have your way, God, that you would save. God, we ask that you would heal. God, we ask that you would deliver. In the name of Jesus, we pray and will forever say thank you. Amen.
Lord is blessing me right now. That he woke us up this morning. And he started us on our way. God, that's good to know that he woke us up this morning. And he started us on our way. That the Lord is blessing us right now. Let's just spend some time just, just worshiping God this morning. Come on, if, if, if you know God to be your redeemer, if you know God as almighty, all sufficient, come on, just, just spend some time just worshiping him. God has ever done anything for us. Come on and just thank God this morning. You know God has ever made a way when it seemed like there was no way. something to thank him for. Thank you, your Lord. Said, I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, if God has been good, won't you stand to your feet? Say, you've been so good. You've been so come on if God has been good to you say you've been Lord you've been you've been so so You made, you made, God, you made when, when your back was against the wall, God, you made, God, you made, when, hey, God, you made. So you've been so good. Psalms 100. God, you've been, you've been, you've been. God, you've been. Psalms 100. So good. Hey, God, you've been good. You've been. You've been so.
Psalms 100 says this way. Make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. God, gracious, holy, God, you're worthy. God, we come realizing just who you are. And God, we realize that there's nobody like you. God, so we worship you today. We worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. God, we come realizing that we've messed up this week, God. But God, we, we messed up today. And God, we aren't worthy to be called your sons or your daughters. But God, we thank you now for cleaning us up and putting us in right standards, God. God, we thank you, God. God, thank you for this new day, this opportunity to come back and to worship again. God, we thank you for the ways that you made. God, we thank you, God, for every mountain that you brought us over. Every valley, God, you got us through it, God. God, we thank you for our ups and our downs, God. God, we thank you, God, that we still know our own names. God, we thank you, God, that you allow us one more time just to say thank you. Now, God, we ask that you would have your way in the place. God, not our will, God, but let your will be done. God, we ask that you would heal, deliver, set captives free. Whatever you're desiring to do today, God, we ask that you would have your way. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we'll forever say thank you. Amen.
church. Amen, amen. Thank God, thank God for this day. Thank God for each and every one that's in attendance, both in person and online. Give yourself a round of applause. Amen. Well, it's offering time. Let's try that again. It's offering time. Amen, amen, amen. As we say, God love is a cheerful giver. Amen. Please bow your heads with me. Father God, we come right now just to say thank you. My Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good and so kind to us. We thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, my Heavenly Father. We thank you in advance for what we have and what we're going to receive, my Heavenly Father. And, oh, Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless us with what we receive, my Heavenly Father, for the spreading of your word and the continued advancement of your kingdom. These and many other blessings we pray and we ask in the name of your darling son, Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen. amen. At this time, we ask that everyone would please stand and follow the leads of our ushers. For those that are watching us online, we have several ways that you can support our ministry. The first being Givelify. Select Lutcher as your location, choose KSBC, and follow those instructions. We also have Zelle by using the church email at KSBC of Lutcher at yahoo.com. Lastly, you can mail it to us at P.O. Box 50, Lutcher, Louisiana, 70071. Thank you, and may God bless.
Look, look like about seven people clap their hands. Yeah, I, I, I got a question. H has God been good to you? Then you ought to say thank you. H -h has God made a way for you? You ought to say thank you. Let, let, let me tell you something. It was the Lord that kept your car on the highway. It wasn't you. You ought to say thank you. Anybody went out to eat? Eating in places? Don't know what they done done in the restaurant? It was the Lord that kept you. Has God made a way for you? You ought to tell God thank you. You ought to give God praise. He's been good. He, he's been good. one and 16 following the hymn of the morning If you just grateful that God saved you. If you just thankful that God saved you. Even through the dark clouds. Through the storm clouds. The song says that the sun will always shine through.
Come on, if that's your testimony. Come on, won't you say, if you have, if you have not saved me, God. I don't know, I don't know. Come on, can we just say that all together? If you had, if you had, come on, tell him not save me. Not save me. I really don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. Don't know. storm clouds
Thank you for healing me, God. You delivered me. God, I thank you. I thank you. you would stand for the reading, to honor the reading of God's word. It's, it's, it's very short, but I needed to make sure that you were awake before I began. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. God's word is blessed. God's word is blessed. For, for a little while today, let's consider the power of the gospel. The, the, the power of the gospel. We, 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 we are living in treacherous times. Yeah. And, and, and not just living in treacherous time. Folk are dying in treacherous time. Folk are dying without a relationship with Jesus Christ and they are lost and on their way to hell. We, we, we are living in treacherous times. Our communities are in trouble. Our society is in trouble. All you got to do is look around. If you look around, you will see senseless shootings and killings. You, you will see vicious robberies in, in every community. You will see rampant sexual abuse of little boys and sexual abuse of little girls. How, you will see how Satan have a, attacked marriage and family. Don't talk about the addictions, drug abuse, and alcoholism, and pornography. Look at how the, the rape and adultery, the child molestation, the sexual immorality, same-sex marriages, and homosexuality. Godlessness. People live as if God does not exist. 
be, being lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. People are living without purpose and meaning. The question is, here is the question, what is it going to take? What, what is it going to take to change lives? What, what is it going to take to, to change the situation? Today I've come to let you know that the only answer to what we are seeing is in the word of God. The, 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 today I stand before you and, and I proclaim that it's going to take the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to look at the gospel from three perspectives. Number one, the gospel is personal. Everybody say personal. The gospel is priceless. And the gospel is practical. Here we go. Here's your quiz. You, you ready? You ready for your quiz? Number one, the gospel is. Number two, the gospel is. And the gospel is. Amen. Number one, the gospel is personal. It's, it's, it's personal. Y'all know what this is? Michael Jackson wrote a song that kind of talked about one of these. Would anybody know the name of that song? It was called The Man in the Mirror. I, 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 I'm looking in the mirror. And, and when I look in the mirror, or, or when you look in the mirror, who do you see? You see yourself. That the song talked about if change was going to happen, it needed to start with the man in the mirror. Several years ago, almost every brother in this church ought to have a copy of this book. This little book here, I gave it to you all in brotherhood. This, this book is called The Man in the Mirror. It was written by the author Patrick Morley. The book encourages men to take a hard look at themselves. He, he, he wrote the first step in knowing God's plan for our lives is a commitment to see ourselves as we really are. He, he, he was saying that it starts with the man in the mirror. He was saying that it, it must start with you. See, see, before we could talk about our society, before we could talk about our community, first we need to talk about the man in the... Let, let's have a conversation about you. We, we love to sing. I know I've been changed. Yeah, but, but I got a question. If you have been changed, what did it take to change you? I, I, I need you to think about this. What did it take? To change you. you. You ain't always been saved. You, you ain't always been holy. You have not always been a Christian. What did it take? Talking about be, be, before you was coming to Bible class in Sunday school. <laughs> I'm talking about before y'all was singing in the choir and, and serving as ushers. What did it take? Before you were serving as a deacon and working with the children. What did it take to change you? What changed your life? If you changed, what did it take to change you? Let me give you a hint. Shalika, it was not our willpower. Because if it was willpower, I'd be weighing about 185 instead of 255. It wasn't willpower. It, it, it wasn't your determination. How many times have you quit? It, it, it wasn't your hard work. It, it, it was not your intellect or your academic fortitude. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somewhere along the line, you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know where it was, but you heard the gospel. You believed.
believed the gospel. You trusted the gospel and you grew in the gospel. You were changed. You, if you are changed, you are changed because you are in Christ. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a, a new creature. All things are pass away. Behold, all things become new. Being in Christ changed you. The gospel of Jesus Christ changed you. And here, let me let you in on a little something. Kyron, if God changed you, he could change others too. If God changed you, he can change others too. The gospel of Jesus Christ can cause folk to put down hate and pick up the Holy Spirit. The, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ can, can cause folk to, to, to put down gambling and gossip and pick up grace. If God changed you, he, he can change others too. Cause folk to put down pornography and pick up praise. If God changed you, he can change others too. The gospel can cause punks to become preachers. The gospel, the gospel can cause drug dealers to become deacons. If God changed you, he could change others too. The gospel can call whores to become holy. If God changed you, he can change others too. That's the point of what Paul, that's the point Paul is making in this text. Here in this text, Paul is testifying about the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, if we're going to change lives, if we're going to impact our families, if, if we're going to impact our communities, it will not be because of some social program. It, it, it will not be because of some elected official. I was one of them. It, it, it will not be because of educational opportunities. It, it will not be because of technological advancement. It will be because you and I share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Number one, the gospel is it changed you. And if God changed you, he can change others too. Not only is the gospel personal, the gospel is also priceless. Priceless means that it have a value beyond price. Pr priceless means that you cannot pay for it. Priceless. What, what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news concerning Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 and 4 gives us a complete and a concise presentation of the gospel. Paul said, for I pass on to you as most important what I also received. Here, here it is. For Christ died for our sins according to the scripture that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. That he, here is the gospel. He, here it is, DJ. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he, he rose again from the dead. That, that's the gospel. I'm going to give it to you again. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and uh, he got up from the dead. See, see, look. They, they, brothers Turley, they had about six people that got excited. And see, I'm, what I'm saying is the good news of Jesus Christ ought to make you happy. The good news of Jesus Christ ought to put clapping in your hand and stomping in your feet. The good news of Jesus Christ ought to put a hallelujah on your lips. Jesus died for your sins. Ha. He was buried and he got up from the dead. I got a question. Is there anybody here huh, that's grateful that Jesus died for your sins? That he was buried huh, and that 
he got up on the third day. You ought to shout hallelujah. Shakira, I understand why some folk ain't excited. Yeah, yeah. Brother Derek, I understand. See, see, sometimes in order to appreciate good news, you need to understand the bad news. See, you couldn't shout just now. Don't get excited now. Let me give you this bad news. Here, here is the bad news. Our sin is the bad news. I'm talking about choosing to go our way instead of God's way. I'm talking about the wrong that you and I have done. I'm talking about our disobedience to God's word. I, I told the men in Sunday school, I know the problem. I know what the problem is. Some of us think we're smarter than God. That's why we want to do things our way instead of God's way. Our sin, our, our rejecting God, our not receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, our putting things before God, our sin, that's the bad news. Anybody got sin in their life? I, I need to put my glasses on. Anybody got sin in their life? Anybody need to put up two hands? Anybody need to lift a foot too? The Bible says, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, and if the truth be told, all still sin and come short of the glory of God. First John 1 and 8, let me, let me help y'all. It says that if you say you have no sin, you lie. And you deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. Our sin, the bad news. Listen to this. Maybe you didn't connect this. But listen, all of the problems that we experience in our lives, all of them, all of the problems that we experience in society are a result of sin. God didn't create this this way. He created and he said it was good. It was perfect. It was right. But then disobedience came in. Sin. And sin leads to brokenness. See, see what, we, what we are experiencing is brokenness. And look, you don't have to look far to see brokenness. Brokenness looks like broken relationships. Brokenness looks like addictions. Brokenness looks like depression. Brokenness looks like discouragement. Brokenness looks like guilt and shame. And, and here it is. Nobody want to be in brokenness. All of us want out of brokenness. All of us want to try to fix brokenness. All I want to do is, is fix the brokenness. So we try. Okay, we, 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 we medicated with drugs. Yeah, we, we try to numb the pain of brokenness with the bottle. Yeah, yeah, alcohol. We, 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 we try to fix it. We try to sex our way out. Some of us, we, we, we try to buy our way out. We want the newest gadget and the newest car. All we want to do is try to fix the brokenness. But in our effort, all we do is end up in more brokenness. See, see brokenness is the fruit. Sin is the root. And, and see, when sin is the problem, there's only one solution. See, 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 sin is the bad news. And when sin is the problem, there's only one solution. Not only do we experience the problem because of sin, we go to hell because of sin. Our sin is the bad news. Here's what I just said. I said all of us sin. I'm telling you that there's a penalty for sin. The Bible said that the wages of sin is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life. That, that, that's not, when we talk about that, that, that's not just the physical debt. That is an eternal debt. That's eternal separation from God. That, that's hell. The penalty for sin is hell. Our sin is the bad news. And because you and I sinned, we were, well, I was on my way to hell and could not do anything about it. That was the situation. That's the bad news. We sin because we sin. We deserve eternal punishment in hell. And there's nothing you and I could do about it. That's the bad news. Oh, but I got good news. I got good news. God love you. God love you. The Bible says that God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God love you. God love you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, after I told you the bad news, you ought to have a greater appreciation for the good news. Here is the good news. Jesus died for your sins. Ha. He was buried, ha. and he got up from the dead. Man, man could never solve man's greatest problem. Man's greatest problem is sin. And let me tell you something. What a sinner need is a savior. The five pillars of Islam can't get you right. Some of y'all trying to work to be saved. Your work can't get you right. The Bible says that, that at, at our best, our works are as filthy rags in the nostrils of God. See what a man needs, what a sinner needs is a savior. What a sinner need is a savior. Anybody know Jesus? And anybody know Jesus? Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. The question is, what happened at Calvary? At Calvary on the cross. Jesus died in my place at Calvary on the cross. The penalty that I deserve, Jesus paid. What happened at Calvary? On the cross, Jesus took our sins on himself and suffered the punishment in our place. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. What happened at Calvary? While we were yet sinners, Christ died. What happened at Calvary? He that knew no sin was made to be sin that you and I can become the righteousness of God through him. What happened at Calvary? Jesus died for our sins. He died. Yes, he died. He died. Yes, he died. Oh, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the God that I serve is the God that conquered death. Some people... Some people serve Buddha. Y'all know Buddha. I ain't talking about Buddha who lived to the back of Cusco. Some people serve Buddha. Buddha, Buddha was born in Nepal. Buddha died. He's still dead. Some, some people, they serve Muhammad. Muhammad was born in Mecca. Muhammad died, and he's still dead. Some, some of the Hindus, they served Prahupada. In 1977, Prahupada died. 
and he's still dead. Oh, but we serve Jesus. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried, and he rose again from the dead. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the gospel. The gospel is priceless. We could not pay for it. The gospel is priceless. We could not pay for it. Oh, but Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it. He washed it. Why that snow? Thank God for the gospel. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. And he rose again from the dead. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. It's good news. It's good news only to those who accept it now. That ain't for everybody. L listen to what 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says. It says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Oh, but to those that are being saved. It is the power of God. It's not for everybody. Where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? It was the power of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ that changed my life. What changed your life? O only the gospel can change the heart of a racist. It is only the gospel. That could change the mind of a murderer. Only the gospel can change the heart of a hypocrite. It's, it's only the gospel that could change a thug into a teacher. O only the gospel can change a molester into a minister. They just ain't gonna minister to our children. It's only the gospel that could turn a pimp into a prophet. It's only the gospel of Jesus Christ that could turn a liar into a leader. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Number one, the gospel is. Number two, the gospel is. Number three, the gospel is. When, when something is practical. It's about doing it. It, it it's, it's, it's not about theory and ideals. It's about practice. The gospel is practical. Practical. What, it, what is it going to take to change life? It's going to take you and I sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is it going to take to change families? It's going to take you and I sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is it going to take to change the state of morality among young black folk? It's going to take the God, you and I, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is it going to take to change values? It's going to take you and I, sharing the gospel of Je What is it going to take to change mindsets? It's going to take you and I, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. If you've experienced the saving power of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you, what I'm saying, if you are saved, you ought to feel like I feel. If you are saved, you ought to feel like Paul felt. Let me show you what Paul thought. Three quick points. In verse 14, same chapter, just a little bit up. Romans 1 and 14. Paul felt obligated to share the gospel with the Jews and the Greeks. With racial ethnicity, it didn't matter. Paul felt, if you on your cheat sheet, the first word is obligated. Feel it is. He, I, I'm obligated to share the gospel with the Jews and the Greeks. I'm obligated to share the gospel with the foolish and the wise. 
what, what Paul was saying is, is that he was obligated to share the gospel with everyone that comes in his circle. My question is, what about you? I didn't say what about me. What, what about you? Do, do you feel an obligation to share the gospel? Paul said he was obligated. Not only was he obligated in verse 15, Paul goes on to say that he was eager to share the gospel. Paul could not wait to tell somebody about Jesus. My question is, what about you? Do, do you feel an eagerness to share Christ? Or are you eager to share the gospel? He was obligated. He was eager. And then our text for the day, Paul declares that he was not ashamed to share the gospel. Can you say like Paul, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What about you? Why aren't you telling folk about Jesus? They lost and they're on their way to hell forever. This, 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 I'm going to pull it out again. This is an emergency. What are you waiting on? He was obligated. He was eager. He was not ashamed. My question is, what about you? I'm obligated to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because I've experienced the gospel. Only if you've experienced, you can't give what you ain't got. If you've experienced the salvation through Jesus Christ, you ought to be obligated to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What about you? Are you eager to tell somebody about Jesus? See, see, to tell somebody about Jesus, you got to know Jesus. Uh, 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 to tell somebody about Jesus, you got to know Jesus. Any, anybody know Jesus? Anybody know Jesus? Jesus left his throne in glory. Jesus came down through 42 generations. Jesus, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was born of a virgin Mary. Jesus lived a life without sin. He that knew no sin was made to be sin. That you and I through him might become the righteousness of God. Jesus ha, paid for your sins and mine at a place ha, called Calvary. Jesus ha, went to Calvary to save a wretch ha, like you and me. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. He died. Yes, he died. He died. Yes, he died. They buried my Lord ha, in a bar or two. All night Friday, he stayed there. All night Saturday, he stayed there. But early, early Sunday morning, ha, he got up ha, with all power in his hand. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? The Bible says he ascended into heaven. In one of these old days, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm obligated 
to share the gospel. I, I, I'm eager to share the gospel. And I'm not ashamed to share the gospel. Jesus died for your sins. <laughs> he was buried and he rose again on the third day. The gospel is personal. If God changed you, he could change others too. The gospel is priceless. You can't pay for it. God had to give it. And the gospel is practical. We need to be doing the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I stand before you as an ambassador for Jesus Christ. I, I stand before you as a, a minister of reconciliation. And I need to let you in on a little something that, that, that if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Man, you are on your way to hell. It's just that plain and simple. If you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus, you're not ready. But here's the good news. All you have to do is come and give your life to Jesus Christ. You, you ought to be sick and tired of what you're going through anyway. I, I, I wouldn't be here on earth catching hell and then got to go to hell. Man, we like to say the doors of the church is open, but I'm standing here and I'm standing offering you the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And I, I beg you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that, that, that you don't waste this opportunity, that you come to Jesus right now. I understand your feet feel like cement. Why don't you come to Jesus? Are you going to reject God's invitation? He wants to reconcile with you. And the only way to be reconciled is through Jesus Christ. Or are you going to reject his invitation again? Come, come on. Come on to Jesus. know we're here today and we're gone today yet. I'm, I'm waiting on you. Tell that person beside you, excuse me, I need to get out of this seat. Don't worry about what to say because we're going in the back anyway. Maybe you're in here today and, and you have Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and you're just looking for a, a family, a church family to help you walk this walk. Man, King Solomon is a good place. Why, why don't you come? If you're online today and, and you want to make a decision for Christ or for this family, Man, please text or dial 504-231-5481. I, I can't believe, I can't believe, I can't, I'm having it hard to believe, a hard time believing that you're not going to come to Christ. I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. Might be your last chance. God bless you.
and God keep you. I got a question. How many folk in here are absolutely certain that 100% sure that they are saved? I, I need to see your hands. So you've experienced Jesus. Listen to this. Y'all take a look around all of these people in church today. Research indicates that only 92% of people that attend worship service on a Sunday intend to share the gospel this year. So if we got 200 people in here, that means we're going to have 16 people that's going to share the gospel. That's, that's research. That's what research says. I say that it's going to be different here. My, my question is, my question is, King Solomon, what, what you going to do? What you going to do? La last week, well, the last couple of weeks, Man, I, I, I've been introducing um, a program called 4 by 4 to help us reach the loss for Jesus Christ. Last week, I asked you to identify, to begin to pray, to identify four people that you know that's far from God. Any of us been praying about that? Don't lie. You're in church. Now you can't lie. That, see, that's about 16. That's about 16. You got another chance. You need to be praying that the Lord leads you to four. If it's not four, if it's two, well, that's who God led you to. If it's seven, that's who God led you to. But four people, and, and, and you just identifying them. Next week, I'm going to give you a card for you to write those four people names down. And on Wednesday night in Bible class, I began to talk about interceding for them. You need to identify them before you begin to intercede for them. But let me tell you something. Intercession is very, very important. Before you talk to people about God, you need to talk to God about people. So right now, you just praying that God lay four people on your heart. I'm just talking to saved folk. I wonder if they got more than 16 saved folk. Folk who appreciate what God did in their lives. If God changed you, he could change others too. Identify your four. Next week, we're going to begin to intercede for the four. You're already praying. A lot of us are already praying. At what time of day do we pray for the lost? 316. Every day, we are praying for the lost. Every night on the live, we've been praying for the lost. If you did not get one of those books, the ushers got some in the back. Don't take it if you ain't going to use it. I ain't got but one box left. <laughs> Don't take it if you're not going to use it. But if you're going to use that 30 day prayer guide to pray, please, please take one. But identify your four. My question is, I want to leave you, it is, man, we about to bust these statistics wide open. Th th those numbers represent somebody else that don't represent us amen because people in here and anybody want to know somebody that's lost that's far from God I, I can't believe this all you got to do is look outside I want to see your hand I need these glasses maybe I can't see them. anybody know somebody far from God unsaved, unchurched, uncommitted. They're, on, they're, they're in a bad place. If, if a house was on fire and you could go in there and get somebody without you being hurt, you ought to be rescuing them. What you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do?
get ready to transition into the Lord's Supper. I ask that you would bow with me. God, we love you and we honor you. God, we thank you for this time that you allowed us to come back to your table again. Now, God, help us to remember what you did at Calvary, how you hung, bled, suffered, and died. Oh, God, we thank you that on the third day that you got up with all power in your hand. God, we come, God, right now, confessing our sins. God, we aren't worthy. But God, impute your righteousness now. Cover us now, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. If I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take heed. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brothers, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together into condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Lord Jesus, the same night when he, in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. After the same man also, he took the cup. He adds up, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. 
This is the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. They, they called me, they called me to the back, and you know I, I can't resist. I, I, I can't resist a baptism. I just, I just can't resist a baptism. Hallelujah. That there was a kid that accepted Jesus as their Savior and Lord on the other side in children's church. And the parents request that the baptism be the day. I, I, I say, here is water. What hinder it be? So, so we, we go under the water, brother. I send him in the back. Give, give us one song or you could sing the same song.
Let us pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, right now, God, we thank you. Lord, we, we thank you that young Thomas, God, professed Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Lord, we, we thank you for entrusting him with us, God. Right now, God, we pray that you help us to disciple him. Help us to grow him and nurture him in the admonition of the Lord. Help us to walk with his family, God. To help him grow up in Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kobe back there. Nothing but the rise. Nothing but the rise. I shall see God. I don't know if the water cold. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know the heater wasn't on. <laughs> I just say that um, I stepped in the water. The water was cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> to the almighty great head of the church. We have one Thomas, and Thomas according to the profession of your faith. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
All right, I'm sorry. I Ben was supposed to do this. This sister joined the church a while ago, and she's been serving as a deaconess for a while. And and they say I never introduced her to the church. Um, stand up for us, sister. I, I ain't gonna call her, Saeed. <laughs> I ain't gonna call her, sister. But. But but um this is Miss Augustine Scott. Amen. She's been serving as a deaconess. I just wanted to introduce her to the church. Amen. Thank God. Sir. Hey, our folks that work with children church, don't y'all leave. If you want to work with children church, don't y'all leave. Amen. We 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 we're gonna meet in the fellowship hall immediately after this. I got jambalaya, macaroni and cheese, fried chicken. Trying to entice somebody. Amen. Like Brother Roland Jeffrey said, when we meet, we eat. Amen. Ah. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. I, I, I'm not trying to introduce all of the visitors, but they got two people in here I got to mention. Three people. Three people. I, I ain't had many people I hung with in college, no. But I got a college buddy that's here today that came all the way from Texas. And his brother brought him with us, Willie. Willie, won't y'all stand up, man? That, that's Willie Ice. And his brother sat inside him, his transport, that's Pharaoh, Isa. Amen. Yeah. And y'all on that con that clap don't sound like y'all happy to see anybody. All right. And and also in the back of the church, man, I see Miss Faith Scott. She was over there observing what we were doing in children's church and Sunday school. Man, I'm I'm gonna call our consultant, Miss Miss Faith, Miss Faith Scott. A couple of quick announcements. Like Pastor said, directly following this service at 1 p.m., we're going to have our children's workshop. Don't forget tonight, inside KSBC, The Purpose Driven Life, books are available. Please see any of the deacons after service. We also have male choir rehearsal tomorrow at 7 p.m. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. And dinner will be served. Don't forget, on April the 22nd, beginning at 5.30 p.m., we're going to have our brotherhood. Brothers, we want to see all you all out. And marriage ministry will take place on April the 21st at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Sister Roxy, you want to share with us about the women's fellowship that's coming up? Amen. And Sister Janine, you want to share with us about the Sunday school? The ushers have a card for Children's Church. Um, we're trying to get the children registered for Children's Church so we can know who the children are and who their parents are who are associated with those children. So the ushers will pass out cards. If you have a child that attends Children's Church ages 3 to 11, we need you to scan the QR code with your information so we can have that information. There will be a drawing on Fourth Sunday, which is our kite day, for uh, those parents who have enrolled their children for Children's Church. So we do need that information. Say 
Lady wanted to share with the church. Tell them what you told me. I wanted to follow God's word. Give it back. You see that, huh? Amen. <laughs> Don't forget uh, on Sunday, April the 28th, directly following our 11 a.m. worship service, we're going to have KSBC Kite Day. So come on out. It's going to take place at Lutcher Park. For those that are participating, directly following the service, we're going to have a light lunch. I don't know what that is over here, but we're going to have a light lunch. <laughs> declaring this championship. Pa Pastor won last year, so he's going to try to keep the crown again. So we want everybody to come on out on Sunday, April the 28th, for our family kite day. Amen. And don't forget, don't forget, on the first Sunday, during our 11 a.m. worship service, we're going to pay tribute to our ushers. Amen? Amen. 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 So we want everybody to come on out. It's a day where we're going to show our ushers how much we love them and how much we appreciate the hard work that they do. Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Do we have any visitors with us this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's give our visitors a round of applause. We thank you for coming. We hope something was said or done was uplifted and our doors are always open. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. God in heaven, Lord, we come to you right now, God. We are looking to you, God. You are our help, God. Right now, God, this brother, you know his situation. You made him. You know all about him. And God, thank you for him coming and you having him in your care. We're looking to you, God. Give him strength. Strengthen him, God. Give him comfort, God, for you the God of all comfort. And God, give him peace in the name of Jesus. Keep him in your care. God, whatever needs that's represented in this family life, your word says, but my God shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, meet their needs for their good and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Them cheering heaven. I'm talking about solid as a rock. Tall and strong. Hell on the COVID back there. Amen. Do we have any birthday saints this week? Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the benediction, we ask that if everyone would please stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you in advance for this service, my Heavenly Father. We thank you for the blessing that we're going to receive this week, Lord. Lord, we thank you that your presence continue to dwell among us as we depart from this place. We pray for your guidance and protection throughout the week. 
May the words we've heard, the songs we've sung, and the prayers be offered up as seeds of our transformation in our lives. May your love shine through us, reaching those who are in need. Bless us with unity, faith, and strength as we go forth as ambassadors of your kingdom. And Lord, we will be ever so careful to give you the glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. Lord, bless us as we pray. We ask it right now in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen.